What is going on guys? It is Jamil with Melman Studios. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video. Guys, today we're gonna to be going over the Canon R3 and my one year ownership of this camera. Some of the pros and the cons. Before we get into this video, guys, I wanna thank all of my subscribers for your continued support. Your engagement is awesome on social media, here on, on YouTube. I really appreciate that, guys. If you haven't as yet and you're new to the channel, or maybe you're not new to the channel and you've been looking at some of the videos but haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button, guys. If you guys like street photography, portrait photography, uh, stranger street portrait photography, um, landscapes, that kind of thing, unboxing videos, be sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. I think you guys will like some of the content that I'm putting out. One of my good friends took a look at my website and he said, man, that thing is trash. You gotta revamp it. So I'm working on that. I don't have a date for you yet, but I am working on getting a new design. But in the meantime, guys, www.millmanstudios.squarespace.com. So I have my notes here because I like to go on tangents like I'm doing right now. So let's get into the pros and then we're gonna get into the cons, okay? So the first pro of owning the Canon R3 is the image quality. The Canon R3 has a 24.1 megapixel sensor. And for a lot of people, especially when you look at like, let's say the Sony A1 with a 50 megapixel sensor, some Sony cameras have 61 megapixels. You look at a 24 megapixel sensor for the cost that you're paying, and you may be wondering, you know, why would I be paying so much money on the Canon R3 for 24 megapixels? In the time that I've owned this camera, 24 megapixels has never really been a hindrance to me. I've never been really wanting for more or needing for more. Obviously, if you're gonna need to crop, maybe you're doing wildlife, uh, maybe you're doing big prints, then yeah, maybe something like the R5 or the Sony A1 uh, is what you're looking for. But for the purposes that I use this camera, doing a little bit of street, I do portraits with this and the R5. Um, I do stranger portraits on the street. I do some landscapes with this. And you know, if you're printing at a reasonable size, this is all you need. I've never really needed anything more than this. One thing about this camera and the sensor is that the resolution and the quality is just beautiful. When you throw these files into Lightroom, your file flexibility, it's there and you're able to adjust and manipulate colors as need be. And another thing that I've noticed is that the shadow recovery is amazing on this camera. Another pro would be the file size. Being a 24 megapixel camera, you're not dealing with those massive file sizes when you're transferring your images. Just say you do a wedding or you shoot an event and you have like 3000 images. You're not gonna be spending days transferring those files. These are very well-sized files and the data within those files that's retained is really impressive. So in terms of um, everyday use and workflow, the file sizes in this camera due to the 24.1 megapixels is a plus. Now, if we're talking about the Canon R3 guys, we have to talk about speed. This camera is capable with its latest firmware to do 195 frames per second raw images. And that I believe was in uh, direct um, hostility towards Nikon, the, the Z9 which is capable of doing 120 frames per second JPEG images. So again, this is shooting 195 frames per second raw images at a maximum of 50 frame increments. Very impressive stuff. Obviously, for my purposes, I'm not going to baseball games or sports or anything like that where I'd have to utilize that. But the fact that this machine is capable of doing that, um, it's really impressive. The most I need is 30 frames per second to be honest with you. You have a model walking towards you and you're able to just let them off, let them fly. And then when you go into post, you can pick the best frame and you have so many to choose from. I guess one of the caveats I'll say here is that with the 195 frames per second, you don't get autofocus. But really, how close or far is your target gonna be moving in that 0 0.26 seconds that it takes to fire those off? And yes, that's right, 0 0.26 seconds to fire off 50 frames. That's insane. Now, as you can see here, this is a big boy. And part of the reason is because it holds a massive battery down here. That is another pro, the battery life. This camera is equipped with the LP E19 battery. Look at the size of that thing. This thing holds juice, okay? And this is actually the same battery that uh, my 1DX Mark II had. So it was kind of nice. I have two of these batteries now. And I would say I've done a whole day of shooting a wedding on one battery, okay? 
Um, you can literally do ca like multiple days of casual shooting on one battery. It's really impressive. Let's talk about ergonomics now. This is another pro. This camera feels so good in the hand and it fits my hand perfectly. Another good thing about this camera are the redundant controls. See that right there? You turn to uh, vertical and you have the same controls here. So your hand isn't, you're not doing this. It's all right here. Boom, horizontal, boom, vertical. Super good, feels super good in the hand. You get a nice clutch on there. It feels secure. It's just, feels really good. And after operating with this for so long, when I hold the R5, I'm like, man, this camera's so small. But, you know, I'm used to this camera now and ergonomics pro. Also, on top of that, guys, this camera, it is big, but it's not very heavy. It's only 2.2 pounds. For the size of this thing, I remember when I did the unboxing and I took it out of the box, I was like, wow, the first thing I noticed, this thing is actually quite light. 2.2 pounds. Not the lightest ever, but for its size and capability, good weight. The final pro is gonna be the weather ceiling. Now, I took this camera to Ontario. We went to Niagara Falls and we rode on the ferry called the Maiden of the Mist. This camera was completely drenched, okay? Completely drenched, completely soaked. And honestly, I wasn't even that worried. I saw this one lady, she had her DSLR and that thing just tanked and I, feel, I felt super bad for her. But one thing I could stand by when it comes to this camera is the weather ceiling. Um, it definitely was put through the paces with water. Like I said, it was drenched and it was unfazed. Super impressed by that. Another time that this camera really impressed me was when I was shooting my short film called A Hunter's Virtue. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's about a 22 minute uh, video where I follow two hunters and we go on a little hunting trip and it's really good, you should check it out. It was minus 30 degrees and we were out in the cold hiding out in the bushes for like hours at a time. And this camera was flawless. It was not affected by the super cold, extreme weather. So again, weather sealing and its ability to operate in less than ideal and extreme conditions, super impressed with the Canon R3. Before we continue with the cons of owning a Canon R3, I wanna bring your attention to this amazing plugin called Dehancer. Dehancer is a plugin that allows your digital photos and digital videos to be turned into filmic content with just one click. Dehancer has plugins for Adobe Lightroom Classic, Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci's Resolve, and they even have an iOS app that allows you to utilize these filmic presets on your phone. You can save 10% at www.dehancer.com if you use my promo code MILMID, that's M-I-L-M-I-D. If you are interested, be sure to check out www.dehancer.com. Let's get back into the video. So let's look at the con list of owning the R3. And I will tell you admittedly, the con list is a lot shorter than the pro list because I do love this camera and I've had a great experience with it. The first con is, I guess, what you would call low hanging fruit and it's the most obvious and that's going to be the cost of this Canon R3. In Canada this camera is $8,000. $8,000 guys for this camera. Granted the camera is jam packed with great features and technology. The autofocus is sticky, super fast, 195 frames per second, raw, like it has all that stuff, super customizable, beautiful camera, but you pay for it. It's a massive investment for both non-professional and even professional photographers. So there is that paywall. And um, you know, that is a con for a lot of people because a lot of people don't have access to $8,000 to spend on a camera. And you know, even if you do have access to it, it still hurts and makes the wallet a little lighter. You know, upfront, full out, the camera's very expensive. And I think that's a con. The second and last con for me is gonna be the size of this camera. Obviously, you know, there's give and take. With all the features, the long battery life, on the downside, you're gonna to have to have size because you have to fit all that stuff inside there. This is the charger. This is what you're supposed to bring with you when you travel. This thing. It's almost the same size as the camera. So if you're, if you're traveling with an, R, with an R3, you're essentially traveling with two R3s. No, this is more like an R5, but it's big, right? Uh, whereas with the R5, here's a charger for the R5. Look at that. 
But again, like I said, you're getting excellent battery life. The downside is that you have a massive battery and a battery charger. Another thing is that, you know, if you are into street photography, it's unlikely that you're using an R3. I'm a little weird like that, so I use my R3 for street photography. And with street photography, I think the beauty of it is getting people candidly, uh, getting them in their element. When this is walking down the road, they see it coming <laughs> and they get curious and they say, who is this guy? This is not a normal person. This is not a normal camera. And it could essentially ruin the vibe and uh, stop you from getting those candid images. So you have to be very creative uh, if you do have this camera and get people that are really zoned out, I guess. Another aspect is, you know, drawing attention to yourself with such a big camera is we have to remember the criminal element. Um, they see something like this and it looks expensive and it can draw negative attention to you. So you just have to keep that in mind as well. So those are my pros and cons. After one year of shooting and owning the Canon R3, I recommend the camera. I really appreciate the camera. And if you know, if this is not, you know, something that you want to spend $8,000 on, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. You can see some of my content and live vicariously through me guys. But I thank you so much for your continued support. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video. Let me know your thoughts. Do you own an R3? Uh, did I pretty much cover off on the pros and cons for you or do you have some more? I'd like to hear them. Um, and also if you have questions about the R3, be sure to drop them down in the comment box. Guys, thank you so much. And at the end of the day, don't forget to keep on shooting.